All right, what you see before you, going up for no reserve, starting off at one single dollar and selling to the highest bidder for no reserve, is my awesome custom hot rod sand rail dune buggy. I'm gonna do a video tutorial of the entire car from front to back, from top to bottom, and side to side. It is gonna be long, but it's gonna be very detailed. I wanna go over all the features of this car, so that way you can be really well informed of what you're looking at and what you're getting at. There's no surprises. So to start, this sand rail dune buggy is 100% street legal. It is equipped with a clean, clear Arizona title in my name. It is registered to me. It's my car, never been wrecked, never been rolled, never been crashed. Here is a VIN number right here from the Arizona MVD. It has your driver's mirror, your rear view mirror, removable windshield. Also has your tachometer and all your switches for your lights passenger grab bar has four point harnesses right there on each seat the passenger as well as the driver has your two inch shoulder belts and your three inch lap belts you can add a fifth harness so you can have five point harnesses so going back here to the car it has rear disc brakes it has disc brakes all the way around also has working tail lights, parking lights, brake lights, integrated turn signals. Also has reflector lights right here for your license plate, your license plate light. These two outer lights right here are your tail lights and your integrated turn signals. These lights right here are your brake lights. It also has disc brakes, like I said, on each corner here. It has your horn right here. So I will go ahead and show you the horn. Horns right back here. As you can see, there is your horn. And then going to the side of the car, you can see it has your passenger grab bar or your oh shit bar, your driving lights or headlights, which I will turn on. And then right back down there, again, four wheel disc brakes. And then your integrated turn signals with your parking lights. Also has a removable canvas top, which you can take off. There is just a tiny little tear right there from the snap, the, the, sap, the snap fastener. And then right here is your flag light or your lighted whip. So you can have a flag for the dunes. It just plugs in right there. So I'll go ahead and turn on the car. This is your power switch for your um, alternator light and then your oil light. And then right back there is the motor. So we'll go ahead and fire this bad boy up here. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little whirl. There we go. It's a little cold. Tachometer works. I'll go ahead and turn on the headlights and the tachometer light. There should be your tachometer light. Got your parking lights. These right here are your headlight covers, which I will take off. Keep the rocks out of there. So your integrated turn signals, parking lights, tail lights, brake lights, reflector lights, integrated turn signals right here. Left turn signal. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. And right turn signal. I want to show you this switch right here is for your oil cooler fan. Turn that on. back now and look at the entire car. I'm going to put these headlight covers to the side, go over the features of this particular dune buggy, of the motor, to let you know what you're getting. 
So a lot of these Volkswagens have little 1500, 1600 cc, either single port or dual port motors. That's how they all are. And then they become bored out if they want to go up a little bit bigger to a 1641 or 1776. This is neither of those folks. This is a monstrous 2386 stroker motor. This is the way I got the car. And I'm gonna go over some of the features of this to show you the upgrades. So the only really way to tell is if you have paperwork or the way the motor sounds. Um, and also kind of tell by what size carburetors are on there, the heads and whatnot. So on this particular car, they are running dual 44 millimeter Weber carburetors, which you can see right, I'm gonna zoom in right there. Those are 44 IDFs. So those are very, very, very big carburetors to be running if you had, let's say, a 1600 so this is a 2386 stroker motor they put these like in um, obviously off-road buggies street buggies they put them in porsche replicas the 356s the manx doom buggies the uh, porsche 550 replicas so this has upgraded heads it also has ceramic coated exhaust full ceramic coated exhaust it has the ram air fan shroud to get more air in there and then it has the also mesh style safety guard to keep any type of debris any leaves or anything in the backwoods getting into the fan so that's another part of the upgrade also has the complete remote oil cooler which is right down there which i turned on and then this also uses the uh remote oil filter kit so a lot of these volkswagens have a screen this one has a screen but it has a secondary oil filter here's your cover with your high oil pressure lines going into the uh, oil pump right there and then you have your breather element so that is another upgrade um, these actual high pressure hoses go into the valve covers here by the heads so you can see right there help the heads cool down they have a breather right there also this utilizes twin fuel filters so here is your gravity fed fuel tank i run premium uh, premium is a little bit better for any type of high compression or high uh, torque motors so there is your fuel pump and your fuel shutoff valve which i will touch on in a second your fuel pump going to i'm sorry your fuel filter going right here to your gravity fed fuel pump going to your secondary fuel filter so this one goes to the carburetors this one comes from the fuel tank so it's filtered from the fuel tank then it goes back to the fuel pump and then it goes over to the fuel filter to the twin carburetors upgraded heads um so this is a very very powerful you know 2386 stroker motor also down here with the stroker motor this is the pro street racing transaxle this is out of a volkswagen bug it's upgraded to handle the high horsepower and the high torque of the volkswagen stroker motor so right here this has a close ratio first second third and fourth so this is perfect for any type of road racing any type of a hill climb it's got monstrous torque going around corners it's like a um go-kart literally on steroids um it's a very 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 close ratio first second third and fourth um you know you can cruise back and forth on the freeways and roadways it's not meant to go you know long distance from across country from la to new york if you wanted to do something where you were looking just for a straight um you know freeway driven car you can actually change the gear ratio in these very very easily and run a taller fourth gear out of a volkswagen bus it'd be a 0.82 and that way you can get a freeway flyer you can also change the ring and pinion in the volkswagen transaxle to like a 388 i believe right now it's either a 412 or a 456 and that way you can have a taller third and fourth that drop you down to about a 344 if you wanted to do a double freeway flyer it'd be all four gears out of a volkswagen uh, bus first second third and fourth they'd be spread out very very easy to do um that drop it down to i think it's a 312 double freeway flyer so you wouldn't have any 
quick zero to 60 times or wouldn't be good for road racing or driving off on the uh, backwoods or trails because it would be all just overdrive. This would be a pure cross country car. So that's something you could do, but right now it's geared first, second, third, and fourth, super, super low. So you can go around corners, you can drift. I'll touch on the brakes and everything here in a second. Um, but right there, that is your fuel shutoff valve. That is for safety. Cuts fuel off from the gravity fed fuel tank. It also prevents theft. If you turn that off valve all the way, you let the uh, fuel out of the uh, float bowls or the carburetors, it gets you, you have about a quarter mile and then the car will shut off because there's no fuel going to the carburetors. And then on the side right there, that toggle switch right there, that kills the power to the car. So it is a kill switch if you want to go out to the movie theater, to the drive-in, you know, if you want to go to In-N-Out, White Castle, the casinos, you know, back and forth, leave your car unattended at the dunes, or if you break down, which you'll never break down, the car's super, super reliable. So that's a um, very, very cool little thing about the car. Another thing about these Volkswagens is they're virtually bulletproof. So all you have to do, depending on where you live, is you have to adjust your uh, air fuel mixture, which is on the side of the carburetors. Right here, this is your air fuel mixture for your carbs. It's a twin um, dual barrel carburetor. So depending on where you live, it's tuned here for Arizona. The carbs are in sync perfectly by me. I sync both carburetors. Uh, if you live in lower elevations like me or right at sea level, Arizona, Florida, Las Vegas, you won't have to do absolutely anything. You know, um, California, like San Diego, Inland Empire. If you live somewhere in higher elevations, like uh, Oregon, or let's just say Michigan, or maybe Montana, New York, all you have to do is you're just gonna have to add just a little bit more fuel. So you might have to change your jets to a bigger jet, which is very, very easy. You just unscrew these, pull your jets out, pull your jets out the other side, put in bigger jets from either like a 50 to a 55 or maybe a 60. Um, and then change your air fuel mixture to obviously you're giving them more fuel and then obviously uh, you know richen them up a little bit and then you're gonna have to just adjust the idle which is very 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 simple to do and I use one of these snail meters or synchometers um, you can pick these up for about 30 bucks they're very 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 easy to um, pick up very very easy to tune as you can see right there that's your little snail meter I check my oil, I have another rag there, and then I run right here, which is a little bit of octane booster because I run premium, and these Volkswagens do run better with premium on these uh, stroker motors. If you do not wanna have a Volkswagen, they're super, super easy to work on. If you're not familiar with them, you know, you can pull this entire motor out. It's literally four bolts, folks. It's four 17 millimeters. There's two on this side, two on this side right here by the starter. You undo those, you undo your throttle cable right here, and then undo your fuel filter, and then turn off the fuel right there. And then all you'd have to do is unplug your coil wire and your battery. And you can actually undo this right here because this is all removable. Right here is your bolts for the cage, four bolts. Undo that, and you can slide it right out. And the great thing, folks, is you can drive this all the time, 100, 200, 300,000 miles, where you can pull this motor and you can sell it. Any Volkswagen enthusiast will wanna buy this for their Porsche, their Bug, their Ghia, their Porsche replica. Um, you couldn't put this in a Volkswagen bus because that's different, but uh, any Volkswagen enthusiast would hop all over this. You can turbo this car. But, you know, if you don't want to have a Volkswagen or you're concerned because it's carbureted and you don't want to tune the carburetors, you can actually make these fuel injected. They make fuel injection kits for these Volkswagens. You know, you can get 250, 300 horsepower. You can put a turbo on them. The other great thing about these little Volkswagens, like I said, is you can go ahead and pull this motor out. It'll take you about 20 minutes with you and your buddy. Four bolts. And the hot setup now that people have done or are going to are little Chevy Ecotecs. If you wanna put a fuel injected motor, you can pick up a Chevy Ecotec for about 12, 1300 bucks. Little 2.0s, then they had 2.2s, 2.4s, and 2.5s. Started, I think, about 96, um, 1997 out of the Chevy Cavaliers, the Chevy Cobalts, the Pontiac Solstice, the Saturn Skies, and actually the 2.2s from the factory and those little roadsters were supercharged. You know, those motors have about, I think, 230 horsepower supercharged. If you wanted just a factory single 
uh, non-aspirated motor there without the supercharger. They're about 185 horsepower. And actually, a little uh, you know fun fact is Polaris, the three-wheel auto cycle with the uh, Polaris slingshot, they utilize the uh, 2.4 liter. I think now for 2021, it might be the 2.5 uh, Ecotec. Um, so those are those are very cool motors. I mean, I've had them. I personally. I think they're kind of underpowered. I don't like them. I'm a Volkswagen guy. They're super easy to work on. If you're gonna do something else, which you could do, uh, tons of options are Subarus. You can pick up Subaru Imprezas, Subaru Legacy Motors for 600 bucks. You know, a twin cam turbo uh, off of eBay, any JDM or junkyard. Like I said, you know, EJ20, EJ25. You know, those run you six, 700 bucks. Then you get your wiring harness and then you get your radiator back here. So you would have a um, water cooled, liquid cooled. And then the great thing about that folks is this transaxle from Volkswagen through Kennedy clutch and clutch adapters there, the kit runs you about 400, 450 bucks for the eight Dow um, pressure plate, flywheel and clutch there to bolt on any motor literally to the Volkswagen. So, like I said, you can run Chevy Ecotex, you can run Subarus, um, even Hondas. I love Hondas, you know, a little Honda VTEX, you can pick those up, a little B16, um, F20B. If you wanted to go with a V6, most likely you'd have to upgrade the transaxle to handle that kind of horsepower. You can throw in like, you know, um, a little V6 Honda or a V6 Acura, a J32, a J35 Type S, you know, 300 horsepower. Also, um, the hot setup back in the day, you know, people were running Pinto motors, um, but those are carbureted, or you can do the uh, 2.3, I think it's called Esslinger or Esslinger. Uh, he makes, you know, 2.3 uh, Ford Thunderbirds, the little turbo motors. Those are very cool. They fit back here, so you don't have to worry about cutting the cage. You can also do something, you know, if you wanted to do um, any type of motorcycle enthusiast, you can pull these out and people are running, you know, for 200 horsepower Suzuki Hayabusa's with the complete drivetrain with a six speed, um, Honda CBRs, ZX14s, the list goes on and on. But like I said, these things are bulletproof. You know, when you compare these things to any type of Razor out there, any type of UTV, any type of YXZ or K, FX, I think the new one is, or the Can-Am. Ask yourself this, folks. When was the last time you ever saw one of those with 100,000 miles? Never. I've never seen one. Or 50,000. Or 25,000. Or 10,000. Those things are all street legal here in Arizona and some other states. But when was the last time you actually saw one of those with 5,000 miles? At 5,000 miles, it's time for a rebuild. Volkswagens, you can drive these things cross country. You can put anything you want back there. There's plenty of room. If you wanted to put, you know, a 350 small block Chevy, you know, there's sand rails out there with 350 small block Chevys. If Volkswagen's not your thing, you know, but it's a great running little car for drifting, for road racing, plenty of horsepower. Like I said, you can put a turbo on these things. The sky's the limit. So enough about the motor. Um, back here, Bilstein shocks. Uh, so it has upgraded shocks, newer tires, deep dish wheels, five spoke or alloy wheels on the rear and in the front right there. Um, and then back here, like I said, is your, uh, I forgot to touch on this, your storage compartment. And then this has plenty of room back here if you wanted to put a bench for your kids, you know, probably up to about 10 or 12 if you got, you know, boys and girls. Um, it's very, very, very easy. You can take it to an upholstery shop and then you can uh, have someone make you a bench or buy a bench to match the, uh, the seats. Going on to the seats right here, these are beard suspension seats, very, very comfortable. I'm six foot two, 220 pounds. I fit in the car extremely well. Plenty of headroom, plenty of headroom. This will accommodate someone up to about six foot five. So from about five foot five to six foot five, you'll fit in the car extremely well. There is your dead man or your footman's uh, foot pedal rest right there. So with this, these seats are stationary. They do not slide back and forth, but you can actually buy sliders off of eBay or Amazon and they would bolt onto the tabs right there. They run you about 29 bucks. I think you can actually get a pair for about 56 bucks shipped to your house, um, but those will adjust if you put the sliders on or another shortcut or what you could do is right here on the pedal assembly. This runs you about a hundred bucks for a sliding adjustable pedal assembly from Jamar. You pull the pin, you can slide the uh, pedal assembly forward or rearward to adjust any type of driver, your son, your daughter, your kids, 
Um, it's from Jamar. This has the uh, Willwood master cylinder here, which is hydraulic, and the CNC hydraulic cylinder, so hydraulic uh, clutch and brake. And then this is your disc front proportioning valve, so you can actually take all the pressure off the front disc and run just rear disc in the sand or the dunes. So it's just a turn of the valve. Um, very, very, very simple. And then back here is your individual cutting brakes or drifting brakes. So this is your left and right. When you're making any type of sharp turns left, you can pull this. You don't have to worry about the front brake. And um, it gives um, locking or stopping power to the left rear. When you're going to the right, you pull this one, you know, and uh, you can do 180 degree turns. You can drift. It's actually to steer the car when you're doing wheelies in the dunes. Um, you know, it's it's what the uh, road racers like Ken Block and everyone is drifting with. Uh, here is your scat drag fast shifter with reverse lockout. And then all your gauges right there. Um, that is a headset right there that I run. I just plug in my iPhone for music. You can put in a Rugged Radios Dash um, Bluetooth system right here. So intercoms, they plug in for two headsets. And you can actually plug this in right here. You can mount it right there through the... Uh, through the dash, um, or you can put it right there. They run you about 1200 bucks, I'm not gonna lie, but it leaves you the ability to um, talk to other cars if you're out in the dunes or the sand. You can have communication with headsets, listen to Bluetooth, noise canceling. They're kind of expensive, but like I said, that's what a lot of people have in the UTVs. Um, so it's very, very, very unique. If you wanna do one of those, um, your passenger footrest, passenger grab bar and then i wanted to touch on just a couple things right here the whole interior job is the only thing that's showing for wires that is not in the frame right in the back is the tachometer as you can see right here that is actually into the dash so it's not into the frame but everything else is completely wired into the frame right here so all the wires go into the frame very very nicely done same thing with the parking lights right down here they're into the frame with the turn signals all the way in the back go all the way through the entire car so no wires are really exposed just the initial wiring right here to go through the connectors um another thing about this if you're worried about like you know a trailer um you don't have to worry about a trailer folks because like i said it's street legal you can go ahead and actually use a standard volkswagen tow bar you can actually hook it up it's already wired right here your four pin connector it's a 60 dollars tow bar that you can buy used off of craigslist you can buy them brand new off of ebay for about 90 bucks any volkswagen tow bar will work you hook it up it's two pins you can drive this thing for a hundred thousand miles or actually tow it behind an rv behind your pickup truck behind your passenger car your wife's car if your wife's car even has a little receiver for a bike rack um like a little receiver hitch your daughter's car you can pull this like i said with a toyota prius you can pull it with a honda accord a little four cylinder your pickup truck um you throw it in neutral there's no drive train to disconnect like i said you throw it in neutral and you're off you can tow this thing for a hundred thousand miles and the car is so light it weighs probably about a thousand pounds you could actually probably pull this with a motorcycle with a honda cold wing you could probably pull it with a dirt bike actually um but I, I ride a little ZX-14 Ninja. I know that I could pull this because there is actually no tongue weight. You're just pulling the entire car. Um, has the upgraded front beam right here uh, from Jamar Racing. This is all aluminum for your shock towers and you can put on actual longer trailing arms. You can do mid travel with coilovers with any type of springs off of a UTV, uh, you know, Fox 2.0 shocks. You can get those off of YXZ or Walker Evans, um, race runners. Um, Kings will be kind of expensive. Um, you know, you can upgrade to any type of suspension. You can do full A-arms. And then one of the last things I want to touch on is when you're looking at cars like this, you kind of want to look at what's going on right here with the rack and pinion. That's what you want, folks. A lot of these sand rails and Volkswagens have the uh, steering box right here, and that limits the overall wheel travel. So basically, you have one trailing arm on this side, which is going to be uh, shorter and this side's going to be longer and it's not going to have a correct balance and then you're going to start bottoming out and you're going to start marring up the frame and there's no real suspension flex so when they upgrade the rack and pinion right here to the center of the car everything's equally balanced you're not going to mar up the frame you're not going to bottom out you can put longer trailing arms you can make this a mid-travel car 
way faster and way more reliable than the Polaris Razors, the Can-Ams, any of that stuff out there, folks. You don't have to worry about recalls. Look at some of the fires out there with the uh, Polaris Razor. I think they settled a 23 or $25 million lawsuit in 2018 or 19 for a kid that burned to death out in the dunes. Um, and speaking of dunes, folks, you know, you have to be careful because out in the dunes in California, you do have to wear a helmet because they're under a thousand cc's. These, you don't have to wear a helmet. So you can actually go anywhere you want in this car. Like I said, you can take your whole family if you wanted to put a bench back there. There's no belts to worry about, no uh, ECU flashes, no fires to worry about, no recalls to worry about. You know, if you're gonna spend 30, 40, $50,000 for one of those Can-Ams, you know, it's not a daily driver and these Volkswagens withstand the test of time, folks. So this is a great little hot rod doom buggy. It's perfect to teach your, to teach your kid you know, your son, your daughter, your wife had to drive stick shift. It's how I learned. Um, you know, I used to go to Rocky Point when I was a kid. And, you know, this is a great little father and son hot rod kind of toy. If you're a Volkswagen enthusiast, if you ever built a trike, this thing is super, super cool. It turns heads everywhere it goes. You know, it's a talk of the town. You can actually go to car shows. It's just a very unique hot rod kind of style volkswagen stroker motor doom buggy and then also what you could do if you want to take it to an upholstery shop lastly is you can take this top and have them put in these uh, snap fasteners right here on the front and you can enclose the front end probably run you about 300 bucks which is about a fair price um you can go ahead and have the whole entire front end uh, enclosed and removable for any type of rain but it is a street legal car clean clear arizona title in my name registered to me you're buying it for me it's a no reserve auction fires right up uh, horn, turn signals, street legal, turnkey, ready to go. So if you have any questions, please feel free, stop by, um, drive it, email me, call me. I put my number on the ad. It's a no reserve auction. It will sell to the highest bidder for no reserve. So you don't want to wait until the last minute. And then, like I said, folks, you can tow this thing. If you wanted to buy a trailer, you know, it's 12 feet, four inches long from the front to the back, about uh, five feet, eight inches wide, no reserve auction, folks. Don't wait until the last minute. Thank you and good luck.